Uh, good afternoon and welcome to CC Gurukul lecture. In today's lecture, I'm, we are going to learn about the contribution of Professor Weising to an understanding of social change in India. This lecture is, in, uh, is part of the series on Indian sociological tradition. As we know that Professor Yogendra Singh was one of the most eminent sociologists of post-colonial period. He kind of gave, gave a paradigm shift to Indian sociology by kind of questioning the approaches and methods which were used by the British anthropologists to study India and uh, gives us a kind of a new theory to understand uh, social change in India, social transformation. He himself was witness to the changes that he was ta was taking place and much of the change uh, which we kind of call in terms of modernization or westernization, uh, Professor Weising attributes to the impact of the British rule and most important when we try to understand social change in India are some of the co uh, concepts or pr uh, theories that he has given us. One of his important work is modernization of Indian tradition, which talks about the tradition and modernity and the uh, argument that tradition and modernity are not polar opposite. It's not that the, uh, when modernity comes, uh, tradition kind of gets uh, vanished. He says that there is a continuum. It's not a polar path, it's a continuum. So there is a kind of continuous flow from tradition to modernity and we can see that even today the two kind of coexist. So he is considered, uh, uh, when we look into his theory of social change, we see that Professor Weising considered social change as an ideology. It was not only kind of something which we saw in terms of change which was taking place at the ground level, it was also at an abstract level. It was happening at the level of ideas, at the level of way people's change in the way they were kind of con uh, visualizing reality. So he uh, says that uh, social change is an ideology and characterized truth asserting concept. So, these concept though he was not kind of uh, giving this concept, he looks into the concept given by M. N. Srinivas like Sanskritization, Westernization and the other concepts given in by Western scholars like paracolization, universalization, little and great tradition, rural urban dichotomy or uh, continuum and it enriched the body of sociology of knowledge. So, we cannot just kind of say that uh, uh, there is a shift say from uh, the uh, before colonial, pre-colonial period, uh, Sanskritization was taking place and uh, post-colonial period, it's westernization. It would be incorrect to say th uh, that and uh, it is very important to understand that even the uh, rural urban dichotomy that we say is not kind of very relevant and they, uh, uh, rather than kind of considering these concepts like tradition, modernity, rural, urban, uh, we need to uh, use the concept of continuum in understanding social change. That lot of things which we thought was in the past has continued to exist in the present though in a uh, changed form. So, if we look into the concepts that he has uh, used in understanding social change in, uh, was little traditions. Now, little traditions are indigenous customs, their deities rights found at the folk or peasant level. These are cons uh, 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 the uh, way of life maybe at the village level, at the lo focal, uh, local level and the little traditions are generally through kind of a verbal, it's kind of uh, spreads down through uh, folklore and etc. Now, great traditions are traditions that grow because of outside contact. Great tradition most of the time was kind of considered as written tradition and uh, this was the result of the contact with outsiders and if we kind of make a distinct, literal tradition is found at the village level whereas great tradition is found at the elite level because uh, obviously access to education was uh, uh, not uh, kind of uh, available to all. So, when we look into the process of change through little tradition and great tradition, it says that in terms of uh, improvement of mass communication, improvement in technology, the little tradition can kind of uh, uh, change into a great, uh, there is a shift from little tradition to great tradition and the process of little tradition moving upward at the level of great tradition was termed as universalization by Mackie Marriott. So, a tradition which was uh, kind of restricted to a particular particular village or at a, at a local level kinds of spreads out and becomes a part of uh, uh, the larger population. So, it becomes uh, 
known to one and all. So, that is called a, a universalization by Marriott. Now, the uh, other process would be paracolization. Now, paracolization was the great tradition uh, moving downwards to the uh, local level. So, universalization is moving from little tradition to great tradition and the reverse the great tradition moving down to the local level uh, was termed as paracolization. These concepts uh, Professor Singh critically examines in the understanding or the study of Indian society and he also studies the society not only in terms of these process or concepts given to us by western scholars, but also in terms of the structures of Indian society. Uh, which is uh, basically caste, class and community. And uh, when we try to understand caste, caste was, uh, was understood as a religious institution. It was considered as a functional unit. It was uh, defined as division of labor. Professor Weising says that caste needs to be understood in terms of po political relations, in terms of power and how there is a kind of a nexus between caste and power. It is also a question of domination and sub subordination which can be understood at the level of power. So, one of the recent writings on the basis of contemporary change in villages, uh, Professor Singh argued for the need to rethink the conceptual categories. All these concepts, they are not kind of not fixed, they, they, we cannot be understanding through one lens. You need to kind of have a more uh, elaborative understanding uh, of these concepts which is caste, social class. So, when we look into class, you know there can be multiple ways in we, uh, which we understand. It could be a social institution, it could be a religious, inst uh, it can be an economic occupational division of labor as well as it could be a question of uh, political uh, claim to power. Similarly, the concept of class, we can look uh, understand class with re reference to the market with or uh, we can understand in terms of status and uh, also in terms of lifestyle and consumption pattern. So, we need to kind of first have a clear understanding of these concepts in order to understand the process of social change. So, his, uh, he based his argument on long term analysis. Now, the, you know most of the understanding of social change happens in a very small period a kind of a abrupt, but social change is not a kind of something which happens in a revolutionary manner, it, it is a gradual process, it takes time. So, his observation was based on a large period of time which is from 1955 to 2007. So, that is a long period to make an assessment of transformation which has taken place. And when we look into his uh, work, the modernization of tradition, it kind of gives us a demonstration of what a sharp mind uh, he had at work in kind of not going in by existing theories, not accepting the western model and giving us a theory which was entirely based on his own understanding of society in India. So, when we read the first uh, uh, pages of the modernization of India, it tells us how uh, uh, theoretically sound his uh, work was. So, to read from the uh, book the first piece, the study of social change in view of the nebulous uh, nature of its theory is difficult task and it is more difficult in the case of a society like India, which not only a fathomless historical depth and plurality of tradition, but is also engulfed in a movement of nationalist aspiration under which concepts of change and modernization are loaded with ideological meaning. So, this is a kind of a very exhaustive uh, idea of social change. So, we need to uh, uh, understand the historical pa past in terms of uh, uh, the long history of Indian society, the plurality and heterogeneity of the uh, uh, society as well as the fact that because of the colonial rule and because of the nationalist movement, there was also the kind of an ideological desire or an ideological claim to bring about transformation in Indian society, so that it could become a progressive society. So, a large number of change social reform movements were started in order to do away with certain structures, certain practices which was kind of uh, uh, labeled as being uh, uh, a negative sign of progress and development. So, it became uh, uh, the reason that a certain class or certain population of the 
uh, Indian society wanted to become western or wanted to become modern was because of the ideological uh, desire to become a kind of a nation which was free of colonial rule. So, it needs to understand these it cannot can, can, we cannot just say that because uh, modernization happened because technology came in and uh, scientific mode of thinking came that the society transformed that would be kind of incomplete understanding. So, Professor Singh observed more on social, cultural and political economic field. So, we see he is trying to bring in a, a, a understanding of change in kind of every realm of the society and that will give us an integrated and a more holistic understanding. And um, he says that there are two types of tendency of social change in modern one, uh, India. There has taken place a substantial change in social structure. So, within the uh, society itself, the structure has changed without bringing about structural change in the society. So, certain institutions have changed. So, uh, uh, if we kind of look into joint family, uh, which even Professor A. M. Shah tells us that people were uh, la uh, living in uh, units which were large in composition. And then because of say urbanization or industrialization, the size of the family or the composition of the uh, family changed. But the structure did not, family as an institution continued to function the way it was doing, whether the number of people was more or less was not necessarily a change of the uh, institution itself. And uh, that is kind of helps us to understand that uh, 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 it is kind of change not only in terms of the entire structure of getting overhauled, but it is also in change in the uh, domain of consciousness of the people. So, uh, 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 if we kind of say that people were uh, earlier kind of limited to the job and economy and therefore, there was a kind of a territorial unity, but because the kind of work that the kind of law that people were doing, they had to be kind of setting up separate units or they had to set, set up smaller unit and the, the, in, uh, the consciousness, the ideas or around the uh, institution was changing. So, if we look into his theory of social change, we see that according to uh, Professor Weising, there can be two kinds of change. One is the primary uh, change and the secondary change. He says that the primary change is uh, 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 taking place because of internal changes and he terms it as orthogenetic source of change. Uh, if we kind of see there was kind of emergence of Buddhism, Jainism, we also have the Bhakti movement, the Sufi movement. These were kind of uh, internal changes that was taking place because uh, say Buddhism emerged because of the whole idea to move towards a path of of, uh, e equality to kind of look into some of the limitation which uh, people was feeling that Hinduism as a religion could have done to kind of do away with caste system and therefore, we also see the emergence of Bhakti movement which emerged again in order to reform society. So, this orthogenetic source of change which is taking place in the, within the internal uh, social structure was leading to differentiation. So, you had different sects emerging, you have different kind of uh, internal structures emerging. The second kind of change which he is calling as secondary source of change, he is uh, kind of uh, uh, arguing that this is due to the external, it is an external factor which is causing the change and he terms it as heterogenetic. And this heterogenetic change is the result of contact with other culture, other culture in terms of contact with Islam, contact with the western society and uh, so on. So, uh, he is kind of giving again when he is doing a differentiation between internal level change and uh, external level change, he is also doing a distinction between the cultural change and structural change. He says that there has been a change at the level of culture, ideas have changed, norms have changed, way lifestyles have changed, but structural change is the kind of happening only at a micro level and not the overall structure of the society has not 
changed. So, when we look into the cultural change, he is saying that this change in the domain of culture, culture in the sense of norms, values, ideas, lifestyle and uh, so, we know that large amount of change has taken place which is kind of external uh, with, because of the impact of with the outside western culture. So, maybe a uh, dressing pattern has changed a uh, kind of uh, uh, speaking has changed, our manners have changed, so uh, the norms have changed. So, with preference to in terms of having a higher composition, people prefer to a nuclear or a smaller composition of the family. So, the process of change in culture due to force of globalization, telecommunication, there has been mass media, market economy has emerged. So, these changes have taken the lifestyle or cultural pattern has changed because of the change. Uh, uh, impact of the uh, change in uh, the market, the globalization and so on. When we look at the structural change, he is saying that change can happen at two level, one is at a micro level, another at a macro level. In a micro level, we see the changes as role differentiation. So, there has been kind of new legitimization, if we look into the uh, gender, uh, so with industrialization, a larger employment of women outside the home started taking place and it was legitimized, women were working outside was not kind of not accepted as something which they were doing on their own, but it was a societal legitimate change which was being seen. When you see at the macro level, he says the changes at the political innov innovation. Political innovation, he implies that they are setting up of new structures. We have seen with industrialization, new nation states uh, comes out, industry, market, bureaucracy, all these structures uh, which happens at the level of political innovation are taking place. Now, uh, as we have kind of discussed when in the first part of the lecture that Professor Weising uh, used an integrated approach. He kind of uh, was not a functionalist nor a Marxist. He kind of looks into most of these uh, approaches and gives us an integrated approach. Now, when we look into the source of change, I have just discussed there are two sources of change, heterogeneitic source and orthogenetic source and the nature of change is cultural uh, change in the culture and the second is change in the social structure. So, at the cultural level, his, uh, we know there is a change in the little tradition and great tradition where is this flow from little to great and they could be the other line. The second cultural uh, change that he is saying is due to the, uh, the Islamization coming in touch, uh, contact with Islam and uh, this he calls as uh, uh, secondary impact. The primary impact was obviously westernization because it brought about a larger scale uh, change and uh, uh, he says secondary westernization could be in terms of understanding modernization. At the level of uh, or heterogenetic source of change that is uh, from the outside contact with outside, we see that role differentiation has also kind of taken place because of the contact with western culture and other culture and at the macro level we just discussed that there has been political innovation in terms of new structures, new elite, new market, bureaucracy and etcetera. When we look at the orthogenetics change that is the change source of change emerging within the uh, uh, society at the cultural level the changes are Sanskritization which he calls it as traditionalism. So, secondary westernization Professor Weising calls as modernization and Sanskritization he says it is kind of uh, termed as traditionalism. And, uh, there is a cultural renaissance all uh, at the level, uh, renaissance in the sense of reform, in the sense of bringing about change within the cultural practice. So, there were, uh, if we look into the cultural renaissance, uh, there were, were a lot, lot of practices which the Indian themselves realized that it was kind of not good for the society and therefore, it was need to kind of give up those. So, uh, education for women uh, in terms of egalitarian society, giving more uh, reservation in terms to the members of the lower caste and so on and so forth. When we look into the social structure at the level of orthogenetic change, we see there are pattern recurrence, compulsive. Uh, so, at a micro level structural change, we see that the people were migrating because the agricultural uh, income were not good or there were more industries being set up and people were, were desiring to increase the source of income. So, there was a, a compulsive migration or population shift. And at the macro level, we see elite circulation. 
So, uh, the uh, elite circulation in the sense of succession of kings, ri uh, rise and falls of cities and trade centers. So, these, this is the entire integrative approach to understand social change in uh, India. As we have already looked into this uh, uh, entire mapping of integrated approach, we realize that he has given us two source of change. To repeat the orthogenetic source which was in terms of uh, internal which was reformist in nature and this he says did not bring about modernization. So, orthogenetic change was in change in the cultural system, change in the value system with their own uh, reform, but it was not kind of contributing to modernization and that is why he is referring to Sanskritization as traditionalism. Islamization does not have much impact on modernization because again Islamization he is kind of considering it as part of the orthogenetic source. What he kind of considers as uh, modernization he argues is the result of India's contact with the western society especially with the establishment of the British rule. So, he says modernization uh, which kind of happens at the level of the structure was kind of happened only when uh, 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 the colonial rule started. But then at the same time he has argued that we cannot use any single theoretical framework to understand the complexity and diversity of social change in India and he says his uh, changes are taking place both at the level of culture and social structure and it needs to understand that how these structures even within the social structure the network of relations are changing the structure itself is not changing. So, it is a change within the structure not of the structure. So, he refers to tradition as evolving you know tradition kind of does not mean that it has evolved uh, kind of uh, di disappeared or it has kind of uh, gone to the backside with the emergence of modern modernization. He says that traditions evolves as primordial tradition to modernization with a pattern of change in quality. So, what does he mean when we refers to tradition of India? According to Professor Singh, traditions of India, uh, if we look into what was uh, kind of, if we look into British rule as the point where modernization starts. So, prior to British rule or prior to modernization, what was the tradition of India? It was based on hierarchy, the caste system, uh, holism, continuity and transcendence. And this kind of uh, e uh, e even existed in the traditional, this uh, hierarchy, holism was the part of the western society as uh, well. So, India and western tradition, the traditions were the, uh, the was there and uh, both the tradition whether before the colonial impact were different, where they were divergent. So, the two differed in historical background, the specific social and cultural heritage and overall social situation. So, we cannot kind of say that modernization is a universal uh, fact where both different kinds of tradition kind of converts into one particular universal form of uh, modernization. So, when we look into the change in traditional India, the, uh, the, uh, the change has occurred with confined to differentiation within the framework of traditional and social structure. So, the value system has changed, certain kind of uh, behavior pattern has changed, ideas have changed, but the structural changes are kind of limited. These are kind of uh, limited in terms of the types of roles. Role differentiation has taken place, but yet even, even within the gender uh, no, uh, roles, if we say that with the kind of westernization or modernization gender roles have changed, but their structures of patriarchy has continued. So, that is why he is saying that the structural changes are limited, most of the changes are taking place at the cultural level. Similar development in religious role structures and organization. Uh, kind of you know religion has changed, Rel uh, new cult has emerged, new forms of religious practices have emerged, but religion as a kind of a social structure has not kind of disappeared. So, that uh, those uh, kind of we say that uh, no uh, structural change kind of brings in only the differentiation of role, there is kind of emergence of new structures, but the old or the uh, past tra uh, traditional structures had not completely disappeared. So, when we kind of look into social change and modernization, so we know the tradition existed in society and it continues to exist. The second thing that he tried to understand is social change and modernization. He says that the two things are not the same. It is not necessarily implied that if social change is taking place, it implies modernization. Change can happen in tradition 
tradition itself and that is why he is calling it as modernization of Indian tradition. The changes which were orthogenetic and heterogenetic were pre-modern. Islamic tradition in India was heterogenetic and was established by conquest. But Islamization, Professor Weising says, did not lead to modernization. So, endogenous sources of change, that is internal sources of change, happened in Hinduism, which led to the emergence of new religions like Buddhism and Jainism. But this was confined to Sanskritization and uh, to kind of, uh, to a population which was kind of considered as Hindu community. It was not equally impacting other uh, community. And therefore, when we look into Sanskritization as a process of change, it was not leading to any kind of structural change. So, this was based on historical process which took many generations, even the Sanskritization to take place. It did not happen very uh, kind of in a short period. It was a long period and kind of a lot of change which actually would lead into the uh, change in the structures of society. So, modernization in India according to Professor Weising commenced with the contact with the West. So, the British colonial rule was considered as bringing about vast change in social structure. Uh, that, but it cannot say that all the changes that was uh, 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 kind of all contact, all the West, uh, kind of different contact with happened led to modernization. It only accelerated the process For, and after independence we see that uh, what was kind of started off with the Britishers in terms of industry, in terms of education, setting up of democracy, secularism, the growth of the market. Uh, all these ideas kind of came in with the British call, uh, uh, rule, but they were kind of further strengthened and this kind of waved the uh, process of modernization. So, along with modernization, uh, the kind of structural modernization also took place. So, structural modernization, we see the bureaucracy coming in, the judiciary, the army, all these institutions became formalized, uh, they all became uh, institutionalized and they had a uniform character throughout the country. So, the contact uh, actually led to change of the tradition as well as setting up of new institutions, setting up of new structures and uh, uh, you know the changes with the Britishers introduced led to the consolidation of British power and finally led to the growth of modernizing great tradition. This is what he kind of uh, concludes. It led to the modernization of the great tradition. So, we try to understand social change and tradition in, uh, in the Indian society with reference to the empirical reality, the way in which society has changed. So, this is his contribution to understand so, uh, the social change in India. With this, I come to an end of today's lecture. Thank you.